Welcome to another Pro Tips video. Today, I am going to show you one of the most interesting features in our CCAM A8000 automation units. It is called service forwarding. Normally, our units are mounted in electrical substations or in industrial stations where they integrate various equipment through IP protocols such as IEC 61850 or Modbus TCP. Likewise, it is normal that our units are connected to higher-level systems through communication channels, so that from there they can have supervision and control of the substation. The common practice is also that locally from the substation you can do management of all the IEDs of the substation with the DIGC-5 software, connected to the local network. In the same way, to maintain the time reference of the system, it is common to install an NTP server directly in the substation, which will send the time synchronization telegrams to the different IEDs. However, nowadays there is the need to manage the protection relays directly from the control center, since this avoids the need for long trips to remote sites and improve the reaction time in case of having to intervene the equipment, thus improving the service indicators. Likewise, it can also be beneficial in this type of installation if the time synchronization source comes directly from NTP servers located in the control center. This can save the cost of installing a local time server at the substation. However, the problem is that for cybersecurity reasons, there is usually no direct communication between the IEDs in the substation and these higher levels. Direct contact with the IEDs could be established but that would imply making it necessary to establish an additional communication channel, which must in turn be protected by a firewall router, which involves additional costs. The need to establish this additional communication channel can be easily avoided, and without additional costs, thanks to the functionality service forwarding. This functionality is present in all of our Linux-based CCAM A8000 units, such as the CP8050 and CP8031, and is also quite easy to configure. With this functionality you can route the messages coming to this interface so that they are transferred to this interface, thus avoiding the need to install additional connections between the local network and the control center. Here I am going to show you with a practical example how you can use and implement this wonderful functionality. In this example, we have several CProtect 5 protection relays connected via IEC 61850 with our CCAM A8000 unit through a network port with IP address 172.16.2.1, which in the configuration of our CCAM A8000 we are going to call LAN1 port. The IP address of the CCAM A8000 in this network is 172.16.2.1. Since we want the routing of configuration messages from the control center to be done through the CCAM A8000, we must define as gateway in the configuration of the CPROTEC 5 relays the address of the CP8050 in this network, that is, the IP address of LAN1. Our CCAM A8000 in turn communicates with a control center via the IEC 104 communication protocol through a network port with IP address 172.16.1.1. In the configuration of our CCAM A8000 we call this port, LAN2. Likewise, in the computer where DIGSI is installed in the control center it will be important to define as gateway the IP address of the CCAM A8000 in that network so that the messages directed to the IEDs can be routed through it. We must now configure the service forwarding so that the telegrams of the different services required are transferred from LAN 2 to LAN 1. We do not want all telegrams to be transferred indiscriminately between the two networks. We must know specifically what are the characteristics of the services we are interested in. For example, Relays are managed with DIGC5 through HTTPS connections using TCP IP protocol and port 443. Similarly, NTP time synchronization telegrams use TCP port 123. Now let's see what configuration we need to do in CCAM Device Manager to enable this functionality. We will save this information below so that it will be easier to remember when we have to put these parameters in the configuration. Service forwarding configuration is done in CCAM Device Manager in the firewall box of the CCAM A8000 configuration. There we will find at the bottom the menu to define the service forwarding rules. 
I must add a line for service forwarding the Dixie 5 connection to the CPRTEC relays. And a line for transferring the time synchronization messages from the NTP servers in the control center to the CPRTEC relays. Now, for the first line you define from which interface the messages will be received, and to which interface they will be routed. They will come from the LAN 2, and will be routed to the LAN 1. And now I must define what type of messages will be transferred. We know that they are TCP messages corresponding to port 443. I easily defined that in the configuration. Now I do the same with the second line. The time synchronization messages will arrive on LAN 2 and will be redirected to LAN 1. The NTP messages correspond to TCP messages, port 123. And just like that we have configured this functionality in the CCAM A8000. As you can see, it is quite simple to configure this functionality. With this, I believe that you will have no problem implementing this functionality in your projects with CCAM A8000. This functionality can be used not only with these protocols, but in general it can be used to route any service that uses TCP or UDP protocol with a defined port. Likewise, the ICMP, Internet Control Message Protocol Service, can also be implemented via service forwarding, so that you can ping the IEDs of the substation from the control center, even though the relays are in a different network. I hope you can continue to enjoy all the power of our CCAM A8000. Coming soon with more tips and ideas for you. Thank you for watching.